starring June Lockhart, Hugh Riley, John Provost as Timmy, and of course, Lassie. place and no one else's and we have to take a vow to promise that we won't tell anyone else about this place give me your paw now we swear never to tell a soul about this place you swear come on lassie we better get home dad's probably ready to go to market Timmy, I want you to stay right with me at the market while I sell this produce. Might as well start learning the business end of farming while we're at it. Is it okay if I ask questions? I well, suppose you just keep your ears and eyes open for the first time. You can save your questions for on the way home, huh? You mean you don't want me to talk at all while we're there? Well, let's try anyway, shall we? Okay, Dad. Good to see you again. Mike, I'd like you to meet my son, Timmy. Timmy, this is Mr. Mike Finch. How do you do, Mr. Finch? Heard a lot about you from your father, Timmy. You here to help out? Mostly by keeping quiet, I guess. <laughs> I told him the best way to learn is to watch and listen. And if the crops go on being as good as they've been this year, we'll be needing even more of his help. It's scratch. Our unofficial mascot. He has the run of the place. Go ahead and play with him if you want to. We'll be busy for a while. But don't go too far away. Have fun. Let's get the truck unloaded, huh? Ha! 
someone wants, they'll pay you for it. Well, that's the first rule. Thanks, Mike. We'll be seeing you soon, huh? huh? Right. Well, come on, let's get Lassie and get started home, huh? trying to tell us that Lassie is in one of the vans that just left here. You try and get some sleep, dear, and don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Look to me. All those truck terminals have gotten my telegrams by now, and as soon as one of the trucks arrives with Lassie, she'll be shipped right home, COD. Good night, Timmy. Night, Dad. Night, dear. Night, Mom. I don't hear nothing. Dog bark. Sounds like it's coming from the van. By gosh, it does. Hey, look. Well, anyway, I'm not hearing things.
But, Mr. Dashu, truck drivers always stop and eat, don't they? And they always read newspapers, too, don't they? Yes, but I'm afraid the Calverton Chronicle just doesn't have a wide enough circulation to reach them. But it's a good human interest story, all right. If I could just get one of the nationwide news services to pick it up, they just might go for it. It'd reach all the big papers. Might even make the radio newscasters. Mary, would you mind getting me the National News Service in Chicago, please? Sounds like us. Takes the animal further from home. Maybe we better check. Can only hope that his dog. Must be half starved. Come here, boy. I won't hurt you. Come on. Hey, come back here. that dog, we'd never catch it. Yeah, I guess the best thing we can do is phone back to Central Market the first chance we get. Yeah, come on, let's get back to the van.
much I can say. Yeah, thanks for phoning and telling me about it. Bye. Well, two truck drivers heard the radio broadcast. They phoned into Central Market, said that Lassie was in the van. She's all right, isn't she? She was when they found her, but she panicked and she jumped out of the truck and she ran into the woods and they couldn't catch her. Oh, no. Man said that it happened near a town called Lexington. That's about, oh, 650 miles northwest of here. Isn't there something we can do? Ruth, she's 650 miles away from home. Oh, oh, C couldn't we put a notice in the Lexington paper? You know, in the lost and found. Yeah, I suppose so. It's worth a try. Mom, Dad, you know what I did? Hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Well, right after school, I went down to see Mr. Dash with the Chronicle. And you know what he said? He said that the story about Lassie was broadcast on the radio. That means someone's probably found her and will be sending her home before we know it. Yeah, Timmy, we, uh, we know about the broadcast. I guess everyone does. And you know what else I did? I bought Lassie a coming home present. How do you like it? At last, he'll have fun with this. Look, his eyes close. Boy, you sure are cute.
Paul? Yes. Do you think we did wrong in not telling Timmy? I just didn't have the heart, Ruth. Seeing him come home, all excited, the present he bought for Lassie, it, it would have seemed so sudden, smashing his hopes. Yes, but he's got to be told. He's growing up. Lots of things happen in life that he's going to have to face eventually. Yeah, I know that. But I also know something else. Telling Timmy the facts is one thing, but I've got another responsibility as his father. I've got to let him know that we're making every attempt to find Lassie and bring her home. Even though I think it's hopeless. What more could you possibly do than what's being done already? Well, first of all, I'm going to go to Lexington and place an ad in the lost and found columns of their paper, offering a hundred dollar reward. It's a good chance that Lassie didn't even go that way. I realize that. But we've got to let Timmy know that we're doing everything we can to bring Lassie back. Lassie are feeding her good? Timmy, I told you before we started out, we're not sure that Lassie has been found. She's got to be someplace. To me, there are hundreds of square miles of woods and wild country between Lexington and home. Dad, Lassie wouldn't take to the woods. What would she do for food? You know she wouldn't kill anything, even if she was starving. I know. I'm aware of that. Then that's why we will probably find you in Lexington, walking around town, or maybe in someone's house. That's what I'm hoping too, Timmy. Dad? Hmm? Thanks for what you're doing. You don't have to thank me, Timmy. After all, what are fathers for, huh?
Get in there. we can do, Timmy. We spent two days in Lexington. We combed the town, newspaper office, sheriff's office, the dog pound, and not a sign of Lassie. You know, we didn't get a single answer to our ad for a reward. She must have gone in a different direction. Do you think Lassie will ever ever find her way home? I mean, well, there's stories about dogs that, that travel thousands and thousands of miles to get home. Yeah, I know. I've heard some of those stories, but they're very rare cases. It would almost take a miracle to me. Dad, I believe in miracles. Don't you? I believe a miracle will happen with my lassie. Where'd you get to? I looked all over for you. Come here. Come on. I'm not gonna hurt you. Come on. I'm your friend. Well, you really put up a fight for yourself. The bite's all over you. Here, let me see that paw. Well, first thing we gotta do is fix these bites. That's gonna hurt, but it's gotta be done. Here and we'll have it fixed up in a jiffy. Come on. Come on. Well, you really must have been starving. <laughs>
sure are a pretty lady. Somebody must be missing you. Wish you could talk. Then you'd have a lot to say, wouldn't you? A dog like you must mean an awful lot to somebody. Wish I knew where you came from. But you're welcome to stay here as long as you like. Well, it's time to go to bed. It gets cold now, you get next to that fire. Keep your bones warm. Good night, girl. Well, Cully, Paul called about an hour ago from Capital City. Yes, they ought to be here any minute. Did they have any luck at all? Did they find Lashy? No. And I'm very worried about Timmy. Oh, wait a minute, Cully. I, I, I hear the truck now. We'll, we'll call you back later. Goodbye. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Mom. No. baby. Tell you that the Berenson's mare had a new colt? Oh, you ought to see it. It's the cutest little thing. Uh, Timmy, Jed West called you. Why didn't you call him back? Jed West? Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm not very hungry. You'll be excused. All right, dear. Finish your milk, though, will you? What do you do to mend a broken heart? Oh, Paul, we don't need more questions. We need some answers. We can't let him go on this way. Let's be honest. Is there the slightest chance that Lassie will come home? It would take a miracle, Ruth. Hey, 
If only he could get interested in something else. Do you remember that little stray dog that Cully took in that had puppies a couple of weeks ago? Well, I'm sure he'd be delighted to let Timmy have one of those. You know, it, uh, it might help to keep Timmy busy. It'd give him a chance to learn to love something else again. Well, are you trying to tell me that you want to take that off, girl? <laughs> well, let's take a look at that foot and see how it is. How's that feel? Well, looks good as new. Do you think the idea's worth a try, Tully? Anything is worth a try, Paul. Can't let my little friend Timmy just go on and on grieving. Like you said, something's got to fill the emptiness in his heart. You know something else, Cully? What's that? Maybe it would be a good idea if, if you brought the pup to Timmy. You know, sometimes a, a friend can do more good than a parent can. And Timmy thinks the world of you, Cully. Yeah, could be. This little tyke's the perkiest of the litter. And get a blaze right down here just like Lassie. Guess maybe she can make Timmy forget if anything can. You're awfully small to have to fill a big empty space in a boy's life, but you're gonna have to try. Ruth, Cully brought the pup for Timmy. She's a cute little cush, ain't she? My goodness. We're expecting an awful lot from you, little girl. Is Timmy in his room? Yes. He spends almost all his time there now. Well, it's all hope. Good luck, Cully, and thanks.
did you come from? You just didn't come here all by yourself. Did you? Mind if an old man butts in? No. <laughs> Cute, ain't she? Kinda hard to believe she's been in this world only a few weeks. She's kinda friendly. That's because she needs a friend, Timmy. Where'd you get her? You remember that stray that came around the farm? What do you think happened? She had a family. This is one of five, all looking for a home. I bet there's a lot of boys who would like to have them. Oh, I'm sure of that, yeah. And of course, this one is the very best one of the whole litter. <laughs> and uh, being the best one, Timmy, and, and you and me being the best friends, I'd like you to have her. Thanks, Mr. Cully, but well, you'll do me that favor, uh, won't you, Timmy? If you want me to. <laughs> I knew he would. Well, I, I gotta be gone. And uh, you come and see me. You know, I haven't seen you for quite a while. I'll come over, Mr. Cully. Been kind of busy, I guess. And I miss you, Timmy.
Well, hello there, Jimmy. Out riding and visiting, huh? I... I came to return the puppy. Yeah. I see. It isn't that I don't... that I don't like her. It isn't that at all. She's gonna grow up to be a real fine dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she has the makings of her, right? Uh, healthy and full of spirit. You understand, don't you, Mr. Cully? It isn't that I don't appreciate your giving her to me. Well, uh, like I said to me, uh, I thought, in, well, until Lassie comes back home. I'm expecting her home any day now. Maybe even this afternoon. Well, that's good news. But I'm not positive. But maybe. Timmy, two good friends ought to be able to talk plain. Real plain, too. Sit down. How long's it been since Lassie's been missing? Three weeks. Or maybe a little more. You're growing up to be a young man, and I know it isn't easy thinking certain things, but sometimes people have to. Did you ever think, Timmy, that maybe Lassie isn't coming home? Ever? Sometimes. Six, seven hundred miles, she ain't a walk around the corner. She's a long, long ways off. I know that. I know more than a lot of people think I know. Sure you do. You know, sometimes we nosy old folks don't give younger people full credit for things. But there's one thing we know. And that's through experience, Timmy, that we all got to try and get over things, no matter how much it hurts. Everybody says that. Guess it's something I... I have to find out. Bye, Mr. Cully. Or you don't want to keep her, Timmy. She might help to fill that big empty holly you got there. Maybe someday. If what you said about getting over things is true. Bye. Bye. We tried. toys. I know. I'm getting rid of them. I don't understand. Lassie's never coming back, Mom. I don't think she's dead or anything. I bet she's got a new home right now with someone real nice. We'll just never see her again. That's all. I'm 
sorry. I have to excuse your mother. I'm pretty fond of Lassie, too, you know. You won't feel so bad later on, Mom. It takes time to get over things. I'm very proud of you, Timmy. I have to take these somewhere, Mom. 